Hello and welcome to the Taikin Ramen channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make my favorite tonkotsu broth. This is a thick, creamy emulsion made from some simple but very important ingredients. Let's get started. Get in, loser. We're going shopping. Head to the store and the first thing that you need is pork neck bones. Pork neck bones are going to give the soup its primary flavor and body. You're also going to need some kind of collagen source as well as fat. For collagen, I like to use pork trotters or if I can find them, chicken feet. As far as a fat source, I'm using salt pork here today. Salt pork is just cured pork belly. You can find it in most grocery stores and I find it's a way to really amp up the fat content of the soup. So if we were to take all of these ingredients home and just immediately boil them, you would get a soup, but it would be very funky. Funky is a word that we use in the ramen community to describe when the blood or gunk on the bones works its way into the soup because you don't clean the bones sufficiently. We want our tonkotsu to have a very clean flavor. So before we boil everything, we need to defunk it. The defunking process starts by measuring out all your bones. Later, when we're boiling things together, we need to keep tabs on how many bones we put in the pot versus how much collagen and fat. After the bones are all measured out, we're gonna put them in a large pot and cover them in cold water. Cover them up and move them into the fridge overnight. One eternity later. So here it's the next morning. I'm grabbing my bones out of the fridge and you'll see here we've made some extremely forbidden Kool-Aid. Yeah. I'm gonna dump this down the sink and check out these bones. You can see that despite the cold soak, they still have plenty of gunk kind of hanging out of there, a little bit of blood. So we're gonna blanch these to get the last of that bad flavor out for the defunking. I've brought a pot of water to a hard boil on the stove, and now I'm moving my bones in a couple at a time. They need to boil for five to 10 minutes. That rolling boil is gonna agitate the bones and get the last of that gunk and blood off of them. After their five to 10 minute boil, check them out and move them into the final cooking vessel. You might see some brown or black bits on these. That could be some marrow from the bone, but what you don't wanna see is any blood or gunk hanging off. If you can grab the bone with tongs and move it around in the water and stuff is falling off the bone, that's how you know it's not done. Check out this before and after. You see the bones on the right look very clean. This bone is an example of one that didn't get fully clean. There's some blood on the bottom. Just run that under some cold water in the sink to solve it. All right, so now we're gonna put together our final mixture before the boil. I've got all my pork neck bones in a pot and I'm adding to it the salt pork as well as the pig trotter. I did blanch that pig trotter. I've got the quantities on screen here. Earlier we measured out the bones. I had about 3,300 grams of pork neck bones. The reason that's important is I'm gonna add 300 grams of salt pork and 250 grams of pig trotter. When you add up your collagen and fat additions, they should be between 10 to 25% of the weight of the bones, depending on how fatty you like your soup. Here you can see I've ended with 16-ish percent for mine. That's going to help you to get that nice even soup. Go ahead and cover these ingredients in water and then move on over to the stove for the boil. Put the pot on the stove and turn your burner to the highest setting. I'm going to cover my pot here to encourage this boil to happen quickly. The rolling boil is essential in making a good tonkotsu. You need the soup to be agitated constantly and the soup is gonna to need to boil anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. Here you can see I'm checking on my soup every couple of hours. Quite a bit of water is gonna evaporate off in that hard boil. So when it gets to about half the original water it started with, I'm gonna add the water in to take it about three quarters of what it originally was. This is about six hours in. You can see the soup is turning a nice bright white. That hard boil is still going and I'm adding water. And finally, this is the next morning. It's been 16 hours on this boil. And of course, we can't forget to pause for gratuitous slow-mo. I'm gonna kill the heat and start removing as many of the bones and components of the soup as I can. These are all pretty much junk. We're getting ready to strain everything out and it is easier without these big chunks involved. You can see here I'm putting a cheesecloth over a wire strainer and I'm just gonna use another pot to hold the final product. 
I put on a hoodie to protect my arms and I got a couple of oven mitts. And now I'm just slowly pouring the soup through the cheesecloth. All the fat and goodness will pass through, but this is gonna catch all of our bones and small fragments that we don't want diluting the soup. I'll make sure to twist up this cheesecloth, get as much of that fatty goodness as I can before I remove it and put it with the rest of the spare bones. I'm covering the soup as it's going into the fridge one more time. Make sure you put a trivet down so that you don't melt through your refrigerator. And now I'm gonna leave it until it solidifies. It's been about a day now. You can see the soup has turned into this beautiful gelatin. A classic sign that maybe you didn't boil the soup long enough or it wasn't hot enough. So when you break the surface here, you'll find liquid underneath. At room temperature or fridge temperature, this ought to be like jello, completely solid and nice and jiggly. Of course, when you're serving this, you're gonna heat it up and look at this fatty goodness. Absolutely incredible. You're also going to need atare, noodles, meat, all things that I'm going to be talking through in other videos. Hopefully you learned something today and I was able to uh, expand your view of ramen it's been a pleasure having you. Subscribe for more.